Hey, yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ to Roll podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, what up? We got DJ D Miles. What up? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. And uh, look, man, I was in Seattle for the for the first time in a long time last year. And uh, yo, shot the Phenom from mm-hmm. Portland uh, in Chicago. Yeah. Hit me up. He said, yo, you got to hit this one person up mm-hmm. in Seattle. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went to his party. It was called Hot Sauce. It was on Saturday at Q Nightclub. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, extended the most hospitable treatment I've ever gotten in Seattle. It was it was a great <laughs> Gross party. Gross your feet, yeah. Yeah, it was a great party. It was a vibe. It was dope shit. And um, I'm actually really happy to have him here. He's in here in Las Vegas. We got Seattle's finest. Swerve One, what up, fam? What up, what up man? man? What up, man? Good, man? Thanks for having me, man. Oh, yeah. nah, nah, it was good, man. It's a Yo, blessing th- to be yeah. here, man. Oh, it's a blessing for you to be here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, man. So it was good. It was good to be in Seattle, man. And uh, and I, I I don't know anything about that scene. Like yeah. I know nothing about. <laughs> you just know scene. Seattle. Just DJ yeah. scene. I just scene. know these two white white guys from Seattle, right? Which guy. is DJ Scene. Yeah. And uh, Four Color Zach. You Tina, know what I'm saying? And Tina T. Tina T. And Tina, is she yeah. from Seattle? Yeah. Yeah. She's from Seattle too. yeah. She, I didn't know she was from Seattle. I was from, yeah. I thought she yeah. was from LA. And RIP Risk One. RIP to Risk, Risk One for sure. Yeah. Risk One. Most yeah. 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 Damn, man. Rest in peace, Risk yeah. One. It's crazy, man. Uh, fuck. Still man. hurts. I feel like uh, I've only yeah. been to Seattle one time and it was maybe, fuck, like 2015. I think I played at Tia Lou. Okay. Back in the day. Yeah. And I was only in for one night. It was Thanksgiving weekend. I didn't even get a chance oh, to see the city. Shit. Yeah, yeah. TLU used to pop. Though. It, was the, it was the spot, oh, yeah. right? It was like yeah. the hip hop spot. Like a lot of athletes would go there. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. What is the Seattle scene like? What What, what was it like? It, is there? Because you're not really from. You're like you grew up I in mean, Alaska, right? Yeah. So I was born what, in what, born in Alaska, but I grew Alaska. up in Montana. But I moved to Seattle in 05. In 05. So, so how uh, like around what age were you when you moved to uh, Seattle? So I was 30. 30. Yeah. And so wait, wait. So what's your background though? So my dad was Dominican and yeah. my mom is Norwegian and like Alaska native Aleut. Wow. So, so you were like Dominican in Alaska. How the fuck did Dominicans get up there? <laughs> so that's a real question. <laughs> my dad was, uh, was, was there a Dominic? military guy. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And so that's how my, my mom and my dad met. And uh, there's a lot of there's a couple more, you know, Dominicans up in Anchorage too. That's where I was Are born as in Anchorage, but it was all, you know, military base kind of shit, you know, but that was, yeah. you know, I was born in the seventies. So it's like, I think once, I don't know if the base is still there, but I think after like the base kind of mellowed out a little bit, you know, there was like less, you know, people that were stationed and based in Anchorage. Wow. Yeah. So wait, wait, so you obviously grew up with hip hop and shit Absolutely. Right? and you love, I know you love boom bap hip hop. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. You oh, love yeah. that. Shit. Like, what was that experience like in Alaska, though? So, like, you must have gotten the records like four years later, right? Well, okay, so we got to rewind a little bit. They got like Low in Theory in like 2000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> not Alaska, 10 years later. Alaska was up on game a little bit. But it's they? just, you know, it's a little bit desolate. But the, to clear the story a little bit here, yeah. like, I moved uh, to Montana when I was two. Okay. So I basically grew up in Montana in a city called Billings. Okay. Shout okay, out to my okay. homie DJ Benefit, by the way. That's yeah, my, my my guy in Billings. So uh, you literally you went from Alaska mm-hmm. to Montana yep. to Seattle. Yep. Where there's like no dem you wanted to be the only Dominican right in these states, <laughs> states right? Well <laughs> I mean like an artifact and shit. Yeah, I mean you, I, wait, I, I always want, wanted to rep that out. for sure. Do you speak Spanish? Do you speak Spanish? No, no I'm you a, don't? I am a sellout. <laughs> I'm a sellout, but I still rep the culture for sure. I shouldn't say it like that. It's just uh I just never learned Spanish. My yeah. my, my girl knows Spanish, so boo yeah. just keeps me keeps me laced when we go to And yeah, and you were just Mexico, moving yeah. from you moved from Alaska to Montana cuz cuz your dad he was like he had to he had to be so somewhere. So my mom my mom and my grandmother we moved to Montana cuz my aunt was going to college in Montana. So like oh. basically it was kind of like a family move and yeah. So we, we so was it when your dad when you were growing up was was he around? And stuff? No, no, I didn't even know my dad. Till so I was, was going to ask you, really. Oh, yeah. he's real Dominican. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> Sorry. Damn, I can say that. Damn, I'm, I'm Latin. I'm Latin. <laughs> Wait. So where's your dad from though originally? So he was born in um, Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo. Uh, Dominican. Because I was going to ask you if you grew up around you know if you. So had I didn't really Dominican. have like that influence. Right. Don't laugh at me, guys. But like no, no, the no. first touch of that, I would have to say, was the Beat Nuts. 
in the 90s. Oh, wow. That it was just like, okay, because growing up in Montana, I didn't really know that I was Dominican, you know, obviously until, mm-hmm. you know, I was later on in life. So it was like kind of being labeled, you know, as black and like identifying as that, as such. That's funny. So yeah, we were just growing up in small town yeah. USA. Yeah. We just so we got those about, records late, yeah. by the way, but it was just in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Trump, but we were just talking about like, you know, like, I mean, everyone's so like aware now. Mm-hmm, like, yeah. There's Dominican, they know Puerto Rican, they know Cuban, Colombians, they know all of the shit. 100%. Mm-hmm. But like back in the 80s and 70s, it was like in New York, it was either Puerto Rican yeah. or black. Or black. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Or white. Mm-hmm. A Jewish. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And I, like there was no other Chinese. There was no then, Asian race. The Asians was Chinese. Everyone yeah. was Chinese, <laughs> yeah, right? God yeah. damn. So even if you grew up in New York, you would have been Puerto Rican. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know oh, 100%. Saying? But then when yeah. you're in Montana, you're just black. You have Absolutely. to be. Absolutely. You have to be <laughs> crazy. You have yeah. to be characterized. The shade. You know, it's like yeah. when we were talking about with Spider Tech growing up in Compton, right? Yeah. It's like there's no Dominican in, in Compton, in, really. In, in, in mm-hmm. Compton, LA, for the most part, it's either you black or you Mexican. There's no in between. So you kind of got to pick and choose yeah. who you're going to run with, right? <laughs> it's, it's like you like Spider Tech that looks exactly like me, same sh- you know, same yeah. skin tone. Mm-hmm. He probably had to identify with the blacks. Yeah. Because he, you know what I mean? So or he grew up like, around Mexicans. Yeah. So he's more Mexican. It's than basically American. like back in the day was like prison, right? Yeah. When you yeah. went anywhere, <laughs> yeah. you had to just you identify like, who, who do I look like the most? Because <laughs> yeah. I would have had to join like the Chinese mafia or some shit, even yeah. though I'm Korean, right? Yeah. You'd be in the triads. He's like, yo, like, I'm going deep in his, like, yeah. family. He's like, I didn't want to talk about all this oh, shit. That oh. <laughs> <I> wasn't ready. <laughs> like, yo, my father wasn't around. I don't want to, oh, I I don't want to talk that. about this. No. <laughs> sorry, like sorry. No, so I was wait, not like that. So when Mo- Montana, mm-hmm. what was, like, what was, the, I, I'm just so curious. These are, like, these places are so foreign to me. Yes, yeah, all of us. And I, I'm wondering, like, what. Like you know, what made you fall in love with? Hip- I want to know what was like. Oh, I was I it, tell you that. Was easy. it easy to get? Records? Especially boom bap hip hop. Yeah. No, like definitely. So like, <laughs> fun fun fact. I don't know what made me think of this. Like prior to coming to this interview, but I did. But like the first records that I ever bought were like, you know, Van Halen, 1984, and like Eddie Grant, Electric Avenue, right. and like mm-hmm. I think it was like Rick Springfield, like Jesse's Girl. Like we didn't have like hip hop. Like the first hip hop record I remember. And I think the record store was called like Hot Wax or something like that. But it was uh, Curtis Blow the Breaks. Mm. So like that was like my first like kind of dabble into hip hop. I mean, obviously for like a lot of other people too. But like for me personally, like with the boom bap, but I don't know if I'd really consider it boom bap was like the first time I went to Chicago. And that was in 87. And my Uncle Hutch, what up, what up, Unc, by the way, um, (laughs) he put me on game though. So like the first show that I ever saw was like, I think the tour was called like get the kids off dope or something like that was back in like the late nineties when it was like, <laughs> they were Christ. doing like the, you know, like anti-drug shit, the anti-drug shit. Yeah. So Wait, it was late nineties or late eighties. It was uh, like 80s, oh, the 80s, like 87, okay. 88. Oh, right. like the, it was yeah. literally the called time. like get the kids off drugs or get off kids <laughs> was, off crack or something. They were sponsored by the Dare program. Yeah. yeah. Get the kids <laughs> off dope tour. <laughs> yeah. So, like, with hilarious. the dope tour. But that was like my first introduction to that. And, and so hearing like Pink House, rest in peace, like on the radio out there and Pink playing. Pink House? What's that? Pink House was a DJ in Chicago oh, back, in, okay, back okay. in the day. Like anybody that's from Chicago knows about DJ Pink House. Oh, like that, okay. that dude's OG legend. Wow. So that was your first experience with hip hop. Yeah. You went back to Montana and you're like, how do I find these records? Like were you just. Oh yeah, for sure. And then, I mean. <laughs> I mean, how did you find those it's records? impossible. And it wasn't, um, MTV Vaps wasn't. Was yeah. It I mean, that was what, 80, like 92. No, I actually came out to 89 or 90. So it was like probably like right after that then. Mm-hmm. Was like wow. the first like real, you know, seeing it visually. Oh, you shit. You know, on TV. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That's so yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for me, like buying those records coming up, it was, you know, I had to go to like bigger cities. So the closest wow, city Wow, so you had me, to leave Montana? Oh, 100%. Like, so where did you go? Wow. To Denver. Oh, to Denver. Denver is the closest city, and that was eight hours. In Colorado. So you yeah. would drive eight hours? Oh, yeah. Shit. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. That was some determination. That's some love. Oh, no, yeah, man. Deep game, though. Like, that's how we had to go to shows. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, like, if to go see Wu-Tang, or, like, for example, like, MOP, or, like, you know, any of the flip mode squad shit, like, back then, like, yeah, we had to drive eight hours for that. Okay, so. <laughs> so oh, yeah. So, you and your homies, right? They was on hip-hop, or did you put them onto hip-hop? I mean, some of my homies were, but okay. a lot of them I did, yeah, for sure. But like that was kind of 
so. living in a city that's a maybe a hundred and ten thousand people, right? But, yeah, just and like, like you know, sh- it wasn't segregation then, but let's call it what it was. It kind of was. Mm-hmm. You know, you had your like. I grew up with like where I went to high school. People still rode fucking horses to school. Oh, oh wow, dead ass. So like, <laughs> and they had a they had a hitching <laughs> hitching post and all that shit. So like, Yo, this oh is yeah, amazing, bro. So, so like, you got to horses? understand that there was like, wait, how did you get to school? <laughs> I didn't ride no fucking horse. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> On the scooter and shit. Air Maxes, baby, baby. But god you know. damn. So so what was was there a lot of racism? Like, oh yeah. Of, oh shit. Oh yeah. But like, the cool like part was, was like just, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, it was. To me, as weird as this may sound, right? I respected that more than like the current nonsense of racism that we went through. Because at least in Montana, if they didn't like you, they'd just tell you, mm. you know. And it was like, it wasn't okay, passive. cool. It wasn't passive aggressive. It wasn't. It wasn't sugar coated. You know, it wasn't like right. gaslit. You know what I'm saying? So like, mm-hmm. in that sense, oh yeah. I mean, we can. We got two days. We can talk about that all day. But <laughs> wow, yeah, man. Going back to like how like connecting with other people in a a city like that yeah. that's kind of what connected us was like hip hop you know like hmm. you know my boy Seth rest in peace like that was all of us we all hung out we all liked you know Biggie Tupac you know Tribe I mean you name it I mean we were more like in Montana like on east coast shit so like I mean duck down shit you know right, right. Fucking black, Lord, moon, all oh, shit, black yeah. moon all day you know beat miners you know that kind of shit like lord uh lords of the underground yeah, man. you know <laughs> any death squad shit i mean all of that shit right it was that was what we were into so like that kind of separated us from like the other kids you know because like right around that time you know it's like hip-hop fashion was becoming kind of cool with fresh prince of bel-air and stuff like that so cross colors and you know all that so it's like it was cool to be hip hop it's so it's such a different uh, experience <laughs> i have a question for you cuz you're yeah, into sure. sneakers and shit yeah how were you getting sneakers and, and clothes like i didn't have yeah. shit for sneakers back then like that what was you i mean after? what was you so the, back then? and shit no i mean i would get like <laughs> so the <laughs> we only had one, well three stores yeah universal athletic we had shields and we had foot locker but the thing of it is is i wear a size 12 so there was only getting one size 12 run at each store. So right. that's three chances to land that shoe. Yeah. But if it's a Jordan, you know, black cement three. You're fighting you know, with I'm like fucked. every size 12. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this is like before, you know, stock X and resale and, E-bear. you know, E-bear. knowing people that work at Nike. Well, even. You I, know. I was, I was going to ask you like to, <laughs> to be in Montana and to research where the record stores were. You had to get a yellow pages or something, right? Okay, you're gonna rem- you'll remember wait, wait, this. So, wait, so, wait, so I'm wondering how you knew there was a record store in Denver and knew how to drive there because there weren't no fucking was there MapQuest at that no. time? No, no. It yellow was pages for sure. Yeah, so <laughs> you, you kind of had to like I don't know get a map mm-hmm. and then like be oh let's go to Route 46 and then yeah. exit whatever. Like you had to. It's a lot of like it was you a lot boys, of research. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like, I don't think, like, you know, like, you know, the younger DJs are hearing this. Like, oh, cool. Like, he went to Google Maps and he, you yeah. know, he, oh, he Googled definitely record not. stores. He printed it out. Definitely not. Like, no, like, <laughs> to drive, a, that, it wasn't even the eight hours of driving. It was, like, maybe the weeks of research and preparation to For finally sure. find the fucking record store yeah. that you could go to. And then it was, like, planning the shit. Like, yo, we're going to totally. go. Because I was even going to ask the same about, like, with the concerts. You couldn't just go to Instagram and be like, oh, it's a concert in Denver. No. So, like, you had to, like, really do some research. To we do, had to like, do research, yeah. you That's know. So, so, like, that was, I mean, Ticketmaster back then still. But, I mean, you, but there call, was no computer you called, you know. You were, yeah, like, yeah, in a yeah. queue, in a pod, like, waiting on a phone, you know, to, like, get your tickets. But, crazy. I mean, that's how we had to do it, though. Yeah, this yeah. was just in the 90s. <laughs> no, that was just, like, mid, I mean, early 90s. Yeah. Listening to him made me realize how lucky I, I no, had we, it going we, up. We were blessed in New yeah, York. Man. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. You know? Like I, uh, we, yeah. like, I had to take a, you know, like, I think record stores were pretty much everywhere. Yeah. In and every it's like, borough. Yeah, I mean, Tower Records. You take a train. Yeah. Even, like, when mm-hmm. Fat Beats was there. We well, that's what I ordered yeah. from. Yeah, you did. I ordered from the Fat Beats, cal- um, the little, like, Catalog. Mail the mail like um, thing they would send out every month, but like the monthly mailer. So, so it, that and uh, upstairs records. Can you imagine, right? The way you treasured music. Do you oh, understand? Like, no like other. to to research weeks, 
go drive eight eight hours, sixteen yeah. hours back and forth, right? Yeah, to get music, and now the value of music has dropped to where it's like you can stream micro it. sense. That's why there's no value to any. But of you're forgetting shit. something else too. What else? You had to buy doubles. Oh yeah. <laughs> and it was expensive. <laughs> Fuck yeah, it was expensive. Fuck. I mean, not like it is now, but I mean, yeah. fucky real set resellers, by the way. But <laughs> it's fucking resellers. up the prices, man. That's so crazy. But yeah, I mean, like that's how it was. Though. I mean, full length albums. You know, I mean, if you wanted, like, let's just say hypothetically, like thirty six chambers, and you wanted, you know, mystery of chess box, and you didn't have that single, like you had to buy two of the full length albums to have mm-hmm. doubles. How long would you wait from f- to get it from Fat Beats and shit? Like that? Oh fuck. That shit was like snail trail, bro. Like sometimes it take up to a month. Damn. Oh yeah. I mean, I had to like when I got to, like my first set of twelve hundreds. It was the same thing. I mean, I think I went to no, it wasn't upstairs records then, but like one of those places on the east coast. And, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, two twelve Technic twelve hundreds, two Ortofon nightclub needles, one MTX. Wow. You know, man. fourteen inch mounted mixer with EQ and. The, don't forget about the case. So you know, all, your was, whole experience, everything, everything. <laughs> so it's it's like it was wild delay. Like oh I mean, yeah, it was a wild delay, and he had to like do all this research and work. And there was just, no computers. Just there was to no get Google. like a, just to get a drop of like hip hop. Yeah, <laughs> there's no tracking <laughs> taste, numbers. The taste. Either. There's no tracking numbers either. So don't forget that either. Oh though, my yeah. lord, I forgot about that. And me and never had all the. Oh we man, hip hop porn. <laughs> we had hip hop porn from the right? backyard. <laughs> That's crazy. Never went out wow. time. Smell I know that I, shit. I, I, I don't think I've ever met anyone yeah. with that experience. Damn. I was just say the closest hey. one was a uh, uh, Ross One when he was, was telling okay. about his Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. But that's why he yeah Ross One. Ross loved, is a G though. He loves hip hop so much. Like you know, and yeah. we, we've talked about this before. Like mm-hmm. you know, we, you go to Harlem or you go to anywhere. Like or if you're about to cross like the Triborough Bridge or I forgot like the the the, the what's the bridge for the Bronx. Uptown, um, on. Okay, I know, I know. Anyway, yeah. there, there would always be these motherfuckers, like usually it's African motherfuckers, right? Selling like the bootleg, the bootleg mixtapes, the Boot- tapes, no, yeah, the mixtapes and the t-shirts. They just yeah. have all these bootleg t-shirts, uh-huh. and like if you lived in Manhattan or New York, you never wanted to wear that shit. It was like <laughs> you felt like it was like garbage. It was whack, but now it's like worth. Yeah, so like, like, and, but, like yeah. so yeah. when like. When like years ago, like twenty years ago, when I was like fifteen years ago, I met Ross and he's collecting this shit. I'm like, yo, why the fuck are you collecting? We didn't like those t shirts were whack, bro. <laughs> we used to laugh at people wearing them. Yeah, shirts. motherfuckers used to come to school in that. Like, yo, you must be bro. Those are like three dollar t shirts. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was like that in LA too. If you had the, if you have Bart and he was black, like that was the, the ghetto. Oh, that was dope swabby. though. Though that was the <laughs> black Bart was, was dope, but yeah, we was getting that from the, from the, the Sloss and Swabby. Yeah, from yeah. The swab, yeah. yeah. Wait, so black Bart was whack? Yeah, he had the dreads. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> because people were laughing, but like, yo, your bar is not. And he had like the little African medallion. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. So, I remember that. Yeah, I remember like that the X Clan, the X Clan, or the Bugs Bunny with the yeah. with the Taz, and they're both holding. Oh my oh. god, you're taking me back, yo. When yeah. You, when you dress like crisscross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back to back. Yo, Everybody you, had yeah. that hoodie. Do you remember <laughs> when Button Your Fly Button was like a dope T-shirt? Remember that. It was like the Levi's, like oh, button. Yeah. Remember that? Button. No, yeah, button, yeah. Like yeah. It was like a whole kind of campaign, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like yeah. button fly. Remember, it was like button flies. Yeah, and mm-hmm. that was the shit. And we we're like, yo, man. Instead like, of the zipper, you had the button. But then there was yeah. like the t-shirts that had like button fly on it, and it was like kind of dope. Am I might, yeah. maybe I'm alone here. I don't know. I don't remember that. One. <laughs> I barely. <remember. laughs> that was some Harlem shit. Bro. That was Manhattan, man. I, I don't know. It was like it was <laughs> we was cool with the with the crisscross, big button, big button. Man, that was. That's I had shit. a question. So was it like? look down upon to listen to hip hop in in like your I high mean, school or middle school, you know what I mean? Or was it just like you just had your group of friends and y'all just kind of like kept to yourselves and listened to it? I would say it was kind of more like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was kind of like a footloose kind of situation, you know, like you weren't mm. like listening to like, I mean, because even like the records like, you know, Return of the Mac and shit like that, you know, was like hot records in the mid 90s, like Mm -hmm. when I was in high school. Like you weren't, we weren't hearing those songs at the high school dances. Radio station was like, and the radio station was, I mean, was there a was of, a station, but it was non-existent. What were you know, they playing? Was, what were they playing out there? I mean, it was just like. like Icky Breaky Heart? Definitely. The kind of, I mean, it was, you know, it was country stations. Country, I mean, yeah. and I think I barely remember because, I mean, I feel like once I left in 05, it started kind of changing more down the, as much as I hate the term so wait, urban. They didn't have R&B or like a hip hop station? No. Wow. Until the 2000s, mid-2000s? Probably, yeah. 
And I can't even say that for sure, so don't quote me on that. Wow, man. In case somebody from Billings comes (laughs) from my head on that. So you never heard like, yo, I was on college radio. Yo, (laughs) I did, yeah, for sure. For sure. Because, I mean, I guess I did a college radio show when I lived in in Montana because I went to to a tech college and got my degree in radio and TV. Wow. So I did run like an AM station, and that was a lot of fun because, I mean, I was definitely – like you're living I there. I didn't obey the FCC rules. I'll just say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was playing unedited. Well, were you were you able to contact the labels and get the music? No, no. I wish I didn't have it like that though. The problem was he didn't like, give I a didn't... shit about your yeah. Montana. Yeah. Montana, <laughs> Montana <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I think it's just <laughs> <I'm> the resource. <laughs> it was the resources too, though. Oh, I okay. mean, if I had I known someone, you know, to say, you know, hey, this is how you do things. Like it might have been different, right, but like right. you know, when you're kind of like the oh, lone wolf know, trying yeah. to figure it out, you didn't you even did, know that. Did, was did you try at least to like hit up the record labels? The not at all. In the back of the CD because I it mean, wasn't. He didn't even know it was an option. I didn't know it was right? an option, yeah. and like, I mean, <laughs> there's a certain delivery to it. You know what I mean, though. And I think like to be fair, I was probably like more like the hungry like teen, you know, right, teenage yeah. kid that's just like I really like your music. You know, send it to me for free, you know what I mean, kind of like Did you know about Stretch and Bobito or no? Yes. Did yeah, so like I was getting so like probably around 95. I moved to South Carolina for a summer cuz my boy that I went to high school with, he graduated and had a place down in Myrtle Beach. My boy Pablo. So like that's when I started getting like the taste of like the Ron G's and like the DJ Clue mixtapes and like nice. that whole mixtape game was insane because yeah. it was like, you know how the how the fuck do you find these records? Because mm-hmm. I mean like so many of those records were just like white label shit. You find out later on though, but Freaking that's what made it cool, you know? Because like to me, I love those mixtapes because every DJ did something different, mm-hmm. you know, and it was like a different theme. Like you know, Clue was fucking with Jada Kiss or something, and like. You know, Funk Flex was doing this with Fabulous or whatever, you know, and it was like, these guys were just, I mean, I don't know. It's just to me, the the freestyles and shit were so dope, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over, the, over the beats that we knew. I mean, Lil Wayne, you know, changed obviously with his shit, but yeah, I think that's where it was inspired, you know? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's where, yeah, you know, just getting like the formula of like how the game kind of works, you know, and like realizing, okay, like this is probably how they're getting it, but I didn't know that trick until later on. Wow. For sure. So, you were you, and then... So you started DJing in Montana, mm-hmm. and what you, you were doing? Just your in my parties? basement. No, it was just no. my basement. There was just nowhere. There was nowhere no, to go. Myself. There was nothing. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, for, <laughs> so then <laughs> I mean, it wasn't. So that's it, why it you wanted to move to Seattle, though, right? Well, yeah. I mean, but then why? Well, but then why? Here, but, but then why Seattle? Like, of, you know. So for Seattle, because I thought you were in Alaska. Yeah. Right, and I was like, well, Seattle's pretty close. Totally, that's like the closest major city, right? So for me, Seattle. I mean, it was. Because you could have gone to Denver, maybe, right? Well, I lived in Denver for you did eight months, nine okay. months. It was just, it was not a good time, <laughs> good, good time in my life. Because it was the first time we left home. It was like the struggle. You know, so real. it was just like, oh, shit, we could buy booze on Colorado Boulevard. This is tight. Yeah. We're 18, <laughs> you know? So, like, we just, we wild out, you know? And, yeah. like, I, I mean, not saying that it stopped, you know, probably, but I'm just saying, like, at that point, it was just like, eh, I'm not really feeling this, you know, like we're, we're doing some shit we shouldn't have been doing. I'll just leave it at that. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, cause we, we left the nest though, you know? So like, this yeah, is our yeah. first taste of like the big city. It's like, oh shit. You know, we got the nuggets, we got the Broncos. Like, you know, we're going to all these shows like every other night, like there was something going on. Cause I mean, Boulder at that time, I mean, I don't know if they still are, but like at the, I think it was the Fox theater. Yeah. The Fox theater you, in Boulder. Yeah. But man, that. You were like Some of the those, best shit, man. You were like one like those. You ever seen that show of the Amish kids who like they can go into the city for the first time <laughs> and they, they they can shoot. It's like what is it like these Amish like these kids? They grew up being Amish, but when they turn eighteen or twenty one, they could they, go out on their own. Well, mm-hmm. I think they're allowed to go out mm-hmm. and experience the city and then come back and figure out if they want to continue being Amish. Yeah, and then uh, but when you when they come into the city, they're just kind of like. We're not going back. Starstruck. Well, no, they just, yeah, they, and then they have this idea of what, how the world works and what happens in the big city and, and all of this shit. And they have these dreams and whatnot. Yeah. But it was kind of not yeah. like, I mean, you weren't Amish, obviously, but, <laughs> but it was kind of like that, right? Like, yeah. Where you came in there with all these dreams. Well, for so. sure. And I mean, it's just like, holy shit, like bright lights, big city, you know, like this is tight, you know, going to these shows and seeing like these DJs, like, you know, the opening DJs are even like, you know, the head, you know, the, the headliners DJ, 
you know, doing their thing. It's like, man, this is tight. Like, this is definitely what I want to be doing. I mean, to be fair, there wasn't really like a lot of opportunities at the time. And like in Denver, I felt like it was just, we were getting our feet wet, me and my boy, you know, Nick. And like, it was a lot of drum and bass and like a lot of jungle back then right, in like right, the right. late 90s in Denver. Like, that shit was buzzing. So, like, it just changed my ear to things, you know, and kind of like there's other shit out there besides hip hop, I guess. But I mean, it was a cool experience for sure. But we so just, then, we just so party too much. <laughs> so then, what was this, where where did Seattle come into play? Where so I play? moved like I moved back um, and stayed in in Billings for like another five or six years um, with my grandmother. And like, so what were you doing? You what were you where were you? I was working? just working at a pizza place. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, and then you're you're working at a pizza place and you're going home and DJ. And like, yeah, just in my basement. Like there was like a few places that you can DJ at, but it was just nobody was really on the shit i was on right i mean just to be real like nobody wants to hear me play bush babies love song <laughs> you know like i love that shit but like you know like i didn't equate it to like okay this is like what type of music you play in a club right versus like that that ego that a lot of us can have that no oh, fuck man. that this is my shit and i'm gonna play my shit and like fuck you and fuck them like you know, I'm just going to get my shit off. Right. And so like that was kind of the learning curve. I mean, that was kind of the best way I can explain it was like the minor leagues for me because it prepped me to move to, to Seattle. And the reason why I moved to Seattle is because I had family already there. So it was kind of like, okay, I can go, you know, to New York or LA, but I don't know anybody. And so like I had friends from Montana that had moved to, to Seattle as well. So it was kind of like, okay, I have like a little bit of a safety net there mm -hmm. to feel comfortable to kind of navigate because at the time it was like, even though on a map it's not huge, but Seattle's way bigger than what I'm used right, to. Right, so it was right. crazy culture shock. I mean, shit. I never, I never even had fun until I moved to fucking Seattle in '05. You know, like there's, there's no, there was nothing like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, so it's just different. It's so crazy because I'm, I'm trying to think. You, you're at a pizza place, right? You're mm -hmm. working there five years or so. Wait, right? You're, Probably yeah, five years. Five years, and the whole time you're thinking of how you can. Oh yeah, like, I was waiting, like DJ just plotting and plotting for yeah. five years. Yeah, and then what was the what you just did? You just save enough money after five years to go to Seattle? I'll be real, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and this well, isn't like some crazy like yeah, yeah. Ins inspirational well, yeah, thing. Well, but yeah, I want to know what I, happened. I cashed in the four hundred one four hundred one k and, and dipped. Mm. That's what I did. I mean, I wasn't even like it wasn't even anything crazy. I think like maybe twenty five hundred bucks, wow. and just like packed two two suitcases and left. You know. I was just running with the wrong people, and if I would have stayed in Billings, I would have definitely would have been either in jail or, or dead. Well, I mean, I was losing homies and shit like that, and it's like, what is there like gangs and shit out there? No, it's drugs. Drug dealing. Oh, just hard drugs. What was the yeah. popping drugs over there? Meth. Meth. Wow. Yeah, meth yeah. and like everybody, Dude, you know. I, just, I hate that I called you. <laughs> but you, I mean, come I was on, thinking it's that. Small town, US, it's small town <laughs> USA, you know. So, I mean, in. I never got down that lane, but I knew people that did. So it was just like, it was only a matter of time before those, those lines connected, you know, and just no pun intended, but, um, you know, that just bad decisions. And like, oh, wow. I was, you know, drinking and driving, getting a DUI, right. doing dumb shit, you know, like living up to my name, swerve, you know, running off the road, doing <laughs> dumb shit, <laughs> just doing dumb shit. Is that you how know? you got your name? <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did it to be fair. Like I did look at it like that, but yeah. like. <laughs> during my party days yes it could look like that but i for me it was just more like all, all this home is waiting the term, for him and he see the car just I don't know, like, I swerve, swerve, stop yeah. swerving man but, but to me it was just more like the term of like you know swerving in between like shit you know like i just not one person or like in between your bitch's legs yeah. not like that either <laughs> oh man you're gonna get me in trouble trust <laughs> his girlfriend but no but i mean it's just like i wasn't about hip-hop like i wasn't about like up tempo edm type shit you know yeah, i yeah. wasn't into like just reggae like from where like my experiences and like where i came up like i was inspired by so many different things so like my mom and like my, my my dad you know or my grandmother you know they love country western music so it's like i grew up with johnny cash and you know all that shit the roy orbisons and stuff like that Not stuff i would play in a set necessarily but if it called for it i would know what the fuck to do yeah you know but i also lived you know through the 90s and like most of my friends that, you know, growing up, if they weren't into hip hop, they were like into grunge music. So, you know, the green days and, you know, all that not Nirvana's and stuff like that. But then it went one step further into like the punk rock shit. So like, mm -hmm. 
you know, gutter mouth and the vandal. So it's like, that's kind of how the term came to me was just like, when I do do this DJ shit and I get it off and get out of billings, like I don't want to be just the one trick pony. Cause I thought it was very important even back then. And it, I mean, we'll probably touch this later, but you know, just being a person of color, it's like, we're already pigeonholed into just thinking that we just do hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't think it's right. And why should it look weird? You know, if it, any of my brothers want to play, you know, fucking a rock set or something, you know, or like something that's non stereotyped, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like, that's mean, kind of where the term came from. Yeah. It's not, it's not a problem now, but it was definitely a problem oh, for back sure. in the day. For know? sure. I mean, yeah, it still yeah. happens to some of us, but yeah. I mean, it's gotten better. I mean, do you, <laughs> at least most of these guys won't say it out loud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, do you have like a, do you have like a kind of like, I don't know, moments in the past that kind of still haunt you now with like, you know, discrimination and judgment and stereotypes and shit. Oh, for sure. I, like I, sometimes I, you know, I'll talk with Neva mm -hmm. and I feel like sometimes he still holds on to some of like the stereotypes that carried on in the, in the eighties or, you know, just growing up. Right. Sometimes like, of course, man. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? And, when you speak to motherfuckers now, they're just like they—they they have no they recollection of that, like that even happening or yeah, they don't or even, what it was. Even even just like you telling about hip hop and having, and the and the importance of music at that time, especially in a city like where you win. Yeah, it means so much. Oh, right? absolutely! It's like an escape. It's a thousand like, percent it saved my fucking life. Yeah, it's it's almost percent. it's almost like a you're listening to the music and it's giving you like a hope that there's something more out there. Definitely right. Besides oh, yeah. where, where you grew up in. Definitely, it's crazy. Oh yeah. It's, it's, I, I, you know, I never really, uh, I can't imagine it, but just even talking to you now. Yeah. I mean, it's just like the, the first memory that I have of that is just like Christmas in Hollis, you know, and Jam Master J, you know, rest in peace, opening up the, the presents, unwrapping the presents. And it's, it's a set of 1200s. Like, yeah, yeah, that was like the dream for me. You know, when I got to do that shit, unbox that. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about though? Like, I know a brand new pair of Technique 1200s. Like there's nothing like I that. I didn't get that. I didn't get to uh, 1200s till like out my mid twenties. I couldn't even yeah. afford it. I, I just got, when I first got my equipment, I just had one 1200 one, and a Gemini. <laughs> but that's really all you needed though. Yeah. I mean, really? Cause even the Gemini's were dope too. I mean, shit, when I started, I was like on Sony, like direct belt drives. Mm. I wonder what is like the broke thing to be DJing on as a young kid nowadays. Nowadays? Like yeah. a 200 Like a controller? A controller? Yeah. It's probably yeah. even that bad, right? Which, yeah. The SB3. Yeah, which I use all the time when I'm yeah. traveling. When well, there's, yeah, because the there's like shit. those little mini ones too. Yeah. It yeah. looks like, looks like a mini controller. I, the iPhone connections yeah. and all that, yeah. That's I've been seeing people on those too. That's like the entry level Yeah, I'm thinking right? if I had like a nephew or a son... Yeah, and they're like, man, I'm tired of this broke ass controller. I'm like, yo, you understand? Like, I had belt yeah. drive, <laughs> totally. Because like, I mean, back then it was the Stanton, it was the Stanton kit. I feel like 20 years from now it's gonna be. Like, people oh, mine was the, these DJs are gonna be like, man, I remember I when SB3, I first got my bro. SRT 1000, man. man. Oh, my. remember your first SRT 1000? I got it used, man. <laughs> man, I was so happy when I got. It. I'm gonna be in the background, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> when I got my like, that first was your SRT. entry level shit. Huh? That was your entry level. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that was that, like an SRT 1000 is like the so Technique 1200 for them right now. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, man. But uh, I mean, so you're in Seattle. Mm -hmm. You have family. You link up yeah. with family. And you're out there. And then what do you do for, to get jobs? I'm so curious. So when I moved there, it's so weird that I remember the exact date, but it was October 28th, 2005. And probably Scene was killing it. Scene was doing his thing. And right. this is like right, right about like, the cusp of like DJs were still playing vinyl and Serato came into play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, like yeah, right yeah. in mm -hmm. that pocket. And it was, I remember it being seen DV one soul one rest in peace. Um, B mellow and top spin and Supreme. I think we're like probably like the seven that were really doing right. it in the very, very beginning. And, scene, and scenes party, right? His mashup party. Yeah. Was he was doing that 2080s party. That's like that's when we so first good. started learning about Zach because Zach was like, I mean, sorry if I'm wrong, my dude, but that's when I first started knowing about Zach at least. Four color Zach. Yeah. 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 The king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The world champion. Yeah. So wait, oh, so, so you're coming into the scene. Yeah. And we, so what was your, was that, was your first gigs in Seattle pretty much? Yes. Wow. So fun fact, um, the, the weekend that I 
And you were, you were in like your late 20s or something. 30. Like. I was 30. 30. Even 30. Yeah. Wow. So I moved, or the day that I got here. That's fucking. The very. Like, that's. The level of patience. Yeah. That's insane. Like kids would never understand no. that it took you 10 years. No. Never. To do what you wanted to do. Never. No. And not even like <laughs> progressing by doing no. lounges. No. Like in his oh basement. Oh my God. His yeah. basement for five, six years. Just I would have been crying him. about everybody gatekeeping, right? I mean, that's what yeah. they do nowadays. <laughs> I won't get a gatekeeper, bro. And this dude like, no, drove 16, dog. 16 oh, yeah. miles to get records. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't even drive an hour to get, get you 16 know, they wouldn't miles, even drive, 16 hours. Yeah, 16 hours. They wouldn't even drive an hour to pick up fucking a flash drive. No, they, they won't even uh, join a record pool or join Facts. a Patreon to download one M MP3. Uh -oh. <laughs> I had literally somebody DM me like, hey, do you have this? Like this, you know, this editor, you just had him on your show. Like, can where do i get his music i'm like well just go on his fucking yeah damn him. he said he was on this record pool and he's on yeah. his patreon he's like man that's a lot of money like i'm like really is it <laughs> it's a dollar a day bro <laughs> i'm like his patreon is ten dollars a month and i'm like you know what i'm saying i was just like come on man i sent him the song but i was just like Bro, yeah, you're too nice. You, no, give, right? you, you give him ten dollars. You could give him ten dollars, or you could join the the <laughs> record pool for yeah. one month. What is that like? Thirty dollars? Twenty dollars? Yeah. yeah. Come on. Here you are. Driving and you're definitely 16. gonna get your money's worth too. Yeah. <laughs> you driving sixteen hours? That's for sure. And that, I mean, Fuck, and, and and the, the the part that we're missing and that you guys can relate to is not every time you're gonna find shit, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, it's like. No. So I'm. I'm, I'm I could be go, driving blind here. You know. How many times a month was you going to get these records? I'd say realistically, just because of like the amount of effort that it took, I'd probably say quarterly. So every, every three months. Every, every three months. Okay. Wow. Now, how many records were you coming back with? Did you have like I'm gonna wait I mean, hundred dollars? I'm just. I was saving money, but I mean, minimum probably a couple hundred bucks max. I think like the one time I yeah, yeah. went ham sandwich at Wax Tracks in Colorado, I think it was like probably you know it was at least a G. Oh wow. I mean, because I was finding dope shit, though, yo. Like, I found, like, I still have it to this day. Thank God. Somebody, like, robbed me, but I got it back. Don't even ask how. But the Diamond D and the, Diamond D and, uh, the Psychotic Neurotics um, all-instrumental album on White Label. I don't even know what that From is. the first album? From the, the first, first album. album. Yeah. Oh, really? Stunts, Blunts, and Hip Hop, yeah. Oh, shit. So, like, I mean, I was, I was getting cool, you know, like, to me, like, shit that's near and dear to my heart. Right. You know, like, I still have all those records. I'm not selling my records. I mean, my dad wants me to come get him out of the garage, but I'm still like pleading with him to like. Oh, he finally showed up. Sorry, <laughs> not that dad. Oh, um, the real dad. So it's like it took you ten years to do what you wanted, pretty much, and like, yeah. and then when you look back, I would now, say probably longer. Yeah, right. Well, because I mean, it started out like in high school, like it's just kind of like a I want to say like passion thing, but I mean we were into it, but you know, it was Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince type shit, you know. We listened to like DJ Magic Mike, you know, so it was like hella influenced by that kind of stuff. Like we all wanted to be like scratch DJs, but we all sucked. <laughs> you know, when you we had a Radio Shack mixer, like you can't buy a mixer in Billing, so we were like on a Radio Shack mixer. Yeah, like when you look back on it now, you just said like hip hop, like hip hop saved your life for sure. Because you would have still, you still would have been in Montana. Now. Oh, I would have been complacent, just you know, because I mean, no diss to my friends back home, but I mean, it's just a simpler life. Right. And I've always been just, like I said, the big city kid, you know, that wants, you know, I want to hang out with pro ball players and shit, you know, like I want that big shit. And like most of my friends, you know, like live that typical storyline of, you know, you meet your high school, you know, sweetheart, you guys get married, you have four kids, you, you buy a house on a plot of land and you live there for the rest of your life. You might have a summer home at the lake and, you know, you go skiing in the winter. Right, right. And people are cool with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Shit, sometimes I wish it was that simple, but. Wow. I'm just, you know, oh, it's some different shit, I guess, but. So wait, how, that, how did you sound in your first gigs in Seattle? Oh, man. The first gig I had in Seattle, I opened for Cool Keith and Tash from the oh, Alcoholics. That seems, that yeah, seems aligned, though. That seems aligned with what you Yeah, doing, right? and so it was, it was interesting because <laughs> I'm playing vinyl, you know, and like. Do you remember how you landed that gig? So, short story version, because we can go on for a while on right. that. But when I first moved to Seattle, one of the first shows that I went to um, was Dilated Peoples and Little Brother. Wow. Mm, nice. And, um, I mean, there's just, you know, Seattle vibes, if, you know, like, this is where I want to be. And I knew B-Mello, 
and he was doing a radio show on KXP for Street Sound. So he was like, you know, come through, you know, for one of the shows. And this is like, man, like my family, like they're the best. But like I didn't even have a car and shit, you know, like my uncle would drive me downtown to drop me off type shit, you know, because this is like we're talking about like before. I mean, I think MapQuest was just getting started, you know, right, but right, you can right. print out directions yet still. You know, we had the sidekick, you know, the the T-Mobile sidekicks. Yeah. Like you were you're playing games on that shit, you know. You had that instant messenger. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, I, mean, I, am, I am was on fleek, you know, but um, but the first time that I went to the studio, I met um, one below and my homie Sam Chesno. And Sam was part of a company called, uh, at the time, Obese Productions, and introduced me to Melissa Darby that runs that company. And what they were doing was like, they were pretty much promoting every hip hop show that came through Seattle. And so at the time, they were just looking for someone, you know, to hand out flyers at shows, you know, go to shows for free. Obese Productions. Obose, obese. obese, yeah. Okay. Um, so basically, I got my foot in the door by just like handing out flyers at shows. Like being so the street team. Yeah, yeah, just doing street team shit. And I mean, to be fair, that's probably like the equivalent of like carrying, right? carrying, uh, you know, record you know, mean, crates I, for people like, in the yeah, '90s. You know, it sounds so. like every like that. Now you're getting towards like uh, like every DJ's kind of startup in the '90s and early mm -hmm. 2000s, mm -hmm. working for a radio show or like a, yeah. a station or a promotion company and being a part of the street team, totally like that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, like when I first did that, like I didn't even talk about the fact that I DJ because to me, I was just like really intimidated by seeing and you know, the B mellows, DV ones, et cetera. And I was just like, these guys are really fucking good. Right. Right. Like I, I can't, I can't like, You're that, like you know, hobbyist. I just, well, it's just right? because you guys are going to think I'm crazy, but like I didn't BPM my shit. So like, I'm just like, I'm going off of just what I felt, you know, right. like, <laughs> sometimes it mixed and sometimes it didn't, you know. But you know, um, you know what? I, 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 knew, I knew the difference between a train wreck and a clean mix, though. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Though, so like, there was that difference of like, you know, being hyper conscious of like, yo, like, this shit don't work. Right, right. Get the shit out. Of, you know, mix this out. You know, sort of thing. So, oh no, it's funny because I never paid attention to BPM until I started using Serato. Mm -hmm. I just knew yeah, what but was you, but you faster, knew what, what, was, what was speed. Exactly, yeah. I remember yeah. I used to just gauge, like, whatever was the hottest record, mm -hmm. I would gauge all the records around that speed around there. Yeah. So, like, when you had a record crate, mm -hmm. like, let's say, I don't know, for some reason, like, Eve, uh, who's that girl? I knew that was, like, around 100. Mm -hmm. So then everything around 100 would be around Eve, who's that girl? Mm, okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And then, like, in the club was around all the like 92. Yeah. 90s. 90, so that, yeah. that's how I organized shit. So, like, you know, like, you would you would have it in, in order of whatever. It was just based fuck. on tempos. It was I mean, tem we, but knew, it was, we felt it was, the tempo. We knew what the tempos yeah. were. Yeah, totally. We, it wasn't like, yo, that's 98 or that's 100. No, nah, you wouldn't be yeah. spot yeah. on. Yeah. I remember I saw a video back in the day, like, of Z Trip. And he was, oh, like, doing the tap, he was right? doing the tapping yeah. of the BPMs and then yeah. label everything. And I was just like. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially was, somebody like him, because, I mean, that dude's got fucking crates for days, though. I was like, yo, that's a lot of work. Not, there's no fucking way I'm going to do that. Like, I used to, like, check to see who would do that shit. And I was just like, there's no fucking way. Like, I'm never going to be yeah, that organized. Fuck that. Yeah. I think there was, like, a handful of motherfuckers I knew that did that, but. Yeah. I mean, I, I think everyone did it our way, where it's like you had a couple records. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, man. And you did the same thing with classics and shit like that. You yeah. just worked your way up. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Mary Jane all night long. Yeah. You knew that was like the 90s, and yeah. 100s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you moved up to like 110s with like Cameo and all this exactly. shit or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, then you'd have those party jam too. Those party jam records though too. I forget what. The AV8s. Like oh, the, the AV8s. And there was yeah. like the other ones. Lethal Weapons. And all yeah, that. Lethal yeah. Weapons. Yeah, yeah. You got to see, you got the Lethal Weapons there. We didn't get that on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because okay. it was in Seattle. Did you yeah. got the Mixed Records, records right? Did you, did you I, I had factor? to order them. Yeah. I, I, that's how I yeah. first learned about DJ City. Yeah. DJ City was an online store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, was, the, I was the only, like, I was maybe, I'm, I'm going to say this. Uh -huh. it's, I was the only one in New York probably ordering from them. There was probably maybe a few others. Yeah. But I was spending a lot of money with them, mm -hmm. especially during uh, yeah, because I would I would play all those lethal weapons, mixed factors, and I would, I would everyone would be like, "Where'd you get that? Yeah. Holy shit, where'd you get that?" Yeah, because those were like redrums yeah. and shit before redrums were cool. And they had like an yeah. intro. I remember there was like a, a Justin Timberlake like a uh, Rock Your Body, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and it had like you know this intro. Yeah, these DJs was like, "Yo, where did you get that?" Like, was it the, you... uh, the rock your body body? Rock? No, no, no. It had something no. else. It was like some <laughs> some shit. I don't remember. Like I, I feel like I, I feel like I have one. That has I would never play that now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 
But like, yo, the production on that shit was a. It was kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, they did, they they did a good did. job with those. Yeah, they were solid. Because I mean, you could gauge them because they were always like, you know, you have one track that was like one fifteen, like a Trick Daddy, you know, song mm-hmm. or some shit, and then it'd be like, like you said, like Eve or something at like a hundred. Then I always liked how they broke it down. You know, it's like you'd have like the one fifteen or whatever, like a one hundred, a ninety, and then like an eighty. Mm-hmm. And to me, it was like kind of like, oh well. This kind of feels like Paul Wall's, you know, grills like at 83, 84. Right. You know, so like you knew without really having to. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't want to do that either because everybody <laughs> did it. Like, everybody did it on the old school pioneers because you remember you could tap out the yeah, BPM yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. That's how we that. did it. I mean, well, how my homie did it. I, w- w- if I wanted to track a BPM, I literally get the song and I'd be like, it probably sounds around mm-hmm. Eve. Who's that girl? And I would play them together. But you'd have to test the records out. Oh, I'm yeah. like. Oh shit! It's a little faster, mm-hmm. and then you're like, "All right, maybe this is like Hollaback Girl, Fabulous, right?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, because like, that was like the fastest like hip hop record that you had. That's like, true, yeah. Like, or you know, say, so you're Pump like, it okay, up. yeah, all that shit. Young, like, young, 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 fabulous, young, young, in. So we were like, okay, it's that fast, and yeah, I have to just play everything in, it. and I'd be like, all right, it's that's it's that section of the crate mm-hmm. or whatever with that yeah. speed and shit, man. That's Fuck crazy it. to talk about, though. Like, we've come a long way. I'm, I don't know. You came a long way, bro. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's wild, though. That's, you know, that's This is shit, like though. literally, this whole episode's about how uh, thankful the youth should be right yeah. now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's the title right there. I know. Be thankful. Count your blessings. Be thankful. Oh, shit. So, wait, so you did this cool Keith show. Yeah. So, like, that's kind of how it started. Oh, wait, so you were the street team. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. So, I was on the street team, and, like, they found out through the grapevine that I was, you know, that I DJ too. Like it wasn't, it wasn't something that I was embarrassed about or anything. I just wasn't ready. You know, like I, I knew that there was going to be a time. This is what I wanted to do. But to me, it was just like, I wanted it to feel right. And they needed an opener and they're just like, you're just going to do it. <laughs> oh, cool. So I'm like, ah, you know, like hella anxious and stuff, but like, you know, just. So how'd you do? I don't think I did that good. <laughs> okay. I mean, but that's just me being like, you know, you know, trying to be humble though too. Like, I surprised myself if I'm being real. Like, I thought I would do a lot worse. Right. You know, I didn't have like, you know, skipping records or anything like that. Like, so then you because that's like nerve wracking if you think about it. Like, needles on records no. in the club now. Like, just <laughs> but the, yeah. it, I mean, uh, but there's so many things to account for if you've never DJed on vinyl in a club. Mm-hmm. I mean, and, I, I've done it back home, well, but did. it was like on a small scale. Like, this right. was never like a you know sold out show there, there used to be so many things we'd have to do so if we're, if we're gonna play an album we'd have to like turn down the bass right and we'd have mm-hmm. to turn up the gains yeah. mm-hmm. because the volume on the album the shitty. final yeah. was shitty mm-hmm. but the more you turn up the gains the more feedback you get yep. from the speakers to the needle yeah yeah it's like you would never experience that shit like nope. <laughs> see nope so i so like imagine when you're like quick mixing or you're in new, like in a club like in new york mm-hmm. and i'm putting on an album i had to turn up the gains turn down the bass and then like cue it in mm-hmm. and it was just like you had to do like certain things for certain records it was just like yeah. it was just how it was i feel like with some of those even you had to like turn almost the bass all the way down right on some of those records because you would just have, so you, heavy the you needles, just get would, the needles would get feedback, feedback. Mm-hmm. Yeah. perfect example was um into the dirty six chamber Wu-Tang yes Clan. yo <laughs> i was just gonna say that <laughs> that, that no, was the worst press dead dead <laughs> yeah the, the virginal press on that protect your neck oh my god yeah all those records Ooh, because there was so much so, so many songs on that fucking yeah. album right yeah it was just stuff to well, those loud records though too so like i mean like when they did like that nutter butters like co- uh collab like that was the first time like we heard the, the alcoholics was on that record and i think i forget who the other group was but like all those loud records were like that mm. they're just like you had to really turn those things down yeah it was oh my god <laughs> Be thankful. <laughs> for sure. Be thankful. Be thankful for 320. So wait, so then uh, you just started DJing after that. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it started out as a kind of a thing where there was that transition between, you know, doing the backpack rap thing, quote unquote, or, you know, like doing nightclub gigs. But I mean, at the time, everybody was kind of like, if you're going to do the nightclub thing, the bar was always like being a Vegas DJ. You know, like that was like the the Mount Rushmore, or I shouldn't say really? Mount Even Rushmore. That's that, a weird way to put it, but like like that was the top of the mountain, basically. I mean, I feel like now it's still the top of the mountain. Oh, for sure. But I'm saying back then, like yeah. you know, once scene like left and came to came to Vegas, 
every fucking DJ in Seattle was inspiring to be that dude. Right, right, right. You know, that's why like Zach, in my opinion, gets so much love is because like he just did his thing and just shut, you know, like just kept it a buck and just like did his thing. Mm -hmm. Like he wasn't trying to be anything, but just who he is. That's what I like about it. You know, like they weren't trying to be like, okay, like we're going to be, you know, everybody's going to be Vegas DJs or whatever. He just did. I mean, you could tell by his sets. He plays what he yeah, plays, yeah. you know what I mean, though? And it's just fun. That's what I thought was cool about it. Like, because everybody tried to play like that same lane, you know, like this is what we need to play to get to this point. Meaning like I have to incorporate EDM. I have Absolutely. To be, I have to like it was, And sets. it was very, it was very watered down. You know, it's very scripted. It, it's tough because a lot of clubs at a certain time I, of, you know, at a certain time, maybe around the 2010s, mm -hmm. it's like every club wanted to be Vegas. Yep. And then every DJ wanted to be Vegas. Yep. So then I remember there was a time where everywhere I went, uh, the identity of every city I went to was watered down because they were trying to be Vegas. Yep. Yeah. So I was just like, why are motherfuckers DJing? Like, I would even go back to New York and I'd be like, why are these motherfuckers DJing like they're in Vegas? And I, yeah. I fucking hated it, yo. Yeah. I really, you know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? And it's just like, it was the, it was the fucking worst. People have been messaging me like a lot, DMing me. They're like, you know, like, you know, now that you left Scam, like, are you are you gonna are you able to work in Vegas anymore? Because you know, my dream is to, you know, be a Vegas DJ. But like, if there's if you're not on Scam and if Scam's not the answer anymore, like, how do I get to yeah. Vegas? Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, yo, like, you know, this if you if you check, if you understand what's going on in Vegas right now, there's a ton of motherfuckers who aren't on Scam mm -hmm. who are in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And it's like a lot of them aren't even part of an agency. A lot of them are just doing their own shit. And like I, I just kept telling these motherfuckers like, you know, don't worry about don't let like something like coming to Vegas be like a significant moment in your DJ totally. career. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I'm just like, yo, that's that's just, you know, what I'm saying just like work on your shit and like be a for better sure. DJ. And I think it's more important for you to build a name and build like a style yeah agreed like you come to vegas and you're like yo i'm, I'm over here and I'm, I'm doing this club i'm this club and if i hear you and i'm like you sound like you sound like this dude yeah you know what i'm saying like i mean i'm sure that happens a lot with you guys though right. too where you guys are getting fucking train spotted night day you well, know no, I, gigs, I just you know people are just poaching just, songs and shit or I, trying to sound like you guys i just think people come here and they have an idea of what a Vegas DJ sounds like mm -hmm. and they're doing the imitation of that. That makes sense. Do you understand? Whereas yeah. like you said, Four Color Zach did his own thing. Just different. Built yeah. his own style. For sure. And somehow it Vegas, made it fun too. Yeah. Making it you fun, know? being himself. Totally. And now he's doing his style in Vegas, which is basically never. Yeah. And which is me where like, I literally still have my New York style Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm still doing me. And like Vegas e kind of either conforms to me or I slightly conform to Vegas. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like a mutual conformity, a compromise. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Even with Zach, it's like, you know, it's a compromise where he's like his style is, is fitting in and he's making adjustments and the club's making adjustments or whatever the fuck. For sure. But it's for me, it's just like a, you can't come here and just think like, yo, I'm going to have all these. I have these Vegas gigs. I've made it. And then when I hear you, I'm like, yo, you don't have a style though. You literally no, sound sure. like this motherfucker and that motherfucker. Yeah. And in two years, you might not be around. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, for sure. Yeah, because there was a period where, and you probably would agree, everyone would agree, Vegas was on top of music, like heavy. Like it was like, and then like I started going out of town and I'm like, damn, like I'm a little behind. Like I don't know this. Like I would go to the East Coast and like, or DC or New Orleans mm -hmm. and I'm like, damn, I really don't know what they're playing. Because they went through a period where they kind of wanted to sound like Vegas, and then it became cool to just sound like your own town again. Mm -hmm. And so I would go hear these other DJs in different cities, and I'd be like, oh, okay. So it's not all about Vegas no more, you know what I mean? It's funny. It's like every gig I have, and I don't know if you guys have the same thing, it's very specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like I could DJ this way here and DJ this way the same way here. Yeah. I literally have to, yeah. right? Absolutely, it's like yeah. every fucking room is different. different and sometimes i get frustrated because i'm like i'm doing one room and they're like this is more edm a little hip-hop like no latin mm -hmm. and then this one is like more hip-hop and latin no edm yeah and then it's just like another one and i'm, I'm just like oh man like 
I have to like know all of this shit. I have to know so much shit. Oh, this is more R and B, and like you know, what I'm saying like a little bit of reggae, little bit of yeah. You know, what I'm saying it's just like yeah. it's all over the place. Yeah. And, then, and then when it's one of those things where I hate and like, oh, you could just do whatever you want here. I'm like, really? Can I just do <laughs> whatever? You know, yeah. Can I just do whatever I there, want? There are limitations to that whatever for sure. Like you sure about that motherfucker? Like I could just go there and do whatever I want. You know what I'm saying? And then I go there and they're just doing like you know high energy vegas hip-hop type of room and i'm like oh okay like i'll i'll, conf- I'll do this for you guys or whatever mm-hmm. but um i mean yeah i mean i don't know where we got <laughs> before i just gotta yeah. stop you real quick yeah. and ask you guys this though you guys play gigs down here that say you can't play latin music I mean, there's certain cities. That's there's wild. Certain, no, not in Vegas. Is, oh, uh, I thought you meant Vegas. I was like, what? No. Okay. But like, uh, there's certain cities that I will go Interesting. to. Interesting. Wow. Which okay. is like, yeah, you know, like not too much Latin, a little bit, like not, a little bit of hip hop. Okay. Yeah. Any, I mean, I guess I just look at it like it's kind of like the, the fluffer for hip hop sometimes in, in, in terms of like, you can kind of like soften the mood of the room by playing a hard ass hip hop record like million dollars worth of game by two chains into like you know some bad bunny and you kind of loosen the mood of the room though that's right, right. i guess why i look at it i think there's certain cities right mm-hmm. and it's probably more down south mm-hmm. where okay. i feel like when their clientele becomes like ethnic it 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 kind of um makes the club seem like it's more ghetto Oh, I know. You what you're what I'm I, I know what you're talking about. It's, it's a, I, I, I know exactly. What it's you're a very about. old. It's kind of like a dated. I get you. It's a dated perspective, but uh, uh, some of these clubs down south are like that. I, I've seen that in Washington too. Yeah, <laughs> I won't say the name of the club. Ricky, I'm thinking about you though. I'll just say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, I mean that's. I mean, th- th- you know, that's yeah. I I, I rarely experienced that. That's crazy to me. Yeah. I rarely I mean, that goes to that. like the whole appropriation thing. You well, know, they're, they're, just, what, there's just like literally a city. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say no, this don't. City, yeah. But it, uh, you know, I'll just say you bleep it out. Yes. If there's a club and it opens, right? Mm-hmm. The second, like, um, if it opens, like it's usually more, it's like a white clientele that goes in there. Oh, for sure. But as soon as like they're known for too much hip hop or too much Latin, then you get more Latin and, and black people coming through. And then it just like, then the club's done. Then it's kind of like the white yeah. people won't show up. Well, and that's what they're scared of too, though, it feels like. And then also you're kind of running into that problem where at least where I've had experience in the past, and it might be a little bit different for me, just like having more like, contact with like bar staff and whatnot at a lot of my like gigs in seattle but like you definitely get that you know like depending on if it's you know a hip-hop crowd or a latin crowd like you know them just kind of throwing that side shade like you know fuck it's hip-hop again tonight you know and just like you know what it is right. kind of thing <laughs> i've had i've had like nights more or less get shut down by like security just saying you know don't don't pull up in here like we're playing hip-hop tonight i've had that happen and it was it was kind of fucked up because it was like they you know then literally like two seconds later do like that whole gaslight oh my god it's so good to see you it's like really like i wish i would have known what you just said 30 seconds ago like turning people away so i mean you definitely get that i feel like it's just far as like these venues like don't do too much of this or too much of that or too much of this or too much of that it's been different in every yeah every 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 city's different every city's different every room is different you know um i just been experiencing that more and more Mm -hmm. but it's surprising but I don't, you know, yeah. they don't, they don't really say it, but they, they, but you of, could feel it though. Yeah, and I, I mean, if you're, if you're experienced and you know what time it is, which I know all you guys are like, mm-hmm. you, you could tell the signs without even like anybody even saying shit, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know, like just body language speaks a lot. I mean, uh, what do you call it? You, you had a, like, I mean, the party that I went to, yeah, right. Yeah. It was a great party. Hot sauce. Thank you. It was well every Saturday. Yeah. Every Q, Saturday Q. Q night club. Mm-hmm. And it seemed like it was like. I mean, this was probably after the pandemic, right? Yeah. Um, it seemed like it was the go-to place. Oh, for sure. On a Saturday. Totally. And it seemed like it was a gathering of all the locals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's the idea, though. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, just, I mean you feel it when I was online. It was uh, I mean, a ton of young people. Yeah. Right? And it was all races. Like, it was, it was very diverse. Can I tell you a secret? Yeah. It's always been my goal to have the United Colors of Benetton. Yeah, yeah. For my shows. It's, it's always great. always it, it a goal. Great. It was. I great. don't want to ever cater to like one 
particular group of people because like that's when it just gets weird like Mm -hmm. this is what we should be doing to bring people together you know like with the the way that i mean i'm not gonna get super political or anything but just the shit we deal with you know just the hatred towards each other like let's bring that let's reel this back in let's leave all this hate shit outside you know like we're trying to create this good vibe most of us that have been playing these gigs like like post covid i'll call it i mean we're still in covid but you know what i'm saying right it's Mm -hmm. like I don't know about like you guys, but like at least for us, a lot of us in Seattle, like we're going back to like those feel good, like sing along jams, mm-hmm. you know? And like, you really see, you feel it in a room where like every one of all races is like singing along to shit, you know, and doing like the, I call it like the drunken, like sick Patty's dance, you know, we're just arms <laughs> around each other and like, I love you, but I don't know you. You're just amazing. You know, right. Kiss you all over the face, you know, but like, that's the, that's the vibe we should be going for though. And I think that it's important to be said that like, the venue owners and the GMs and whoever's in charge should trust the DJs to say, you know, look, these guys are professional. Trust your DJs because none of us want to lose our job because the club, the club got shot up or like there was a fight because yeah, yeah. we're always the first ones that get blamed for that dumb shit yeah. every fucking time. I mean, there was a time that I played Michael Jackson at a, at a club and there was a fight broke out and I was like, what the fuck did you play? And I'm like, I played want to be starting something. <laughs> I didn't start think something. it was going to start a fight. But like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the irony, but See, you know if, I, if I was the like, owner, I'd say, that's who you fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> fucked up. You, you know, want to be starting up. something. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just, yeah, I just, I wish we can see more of that. And I think hopefully I think that, that's going to change. Don't you think, think we so. like, we, a lot of us grew up with like the discrimination so that when 100%. we, when we, when we put something together, it's so inclusive. We just appreciate it more. Like we always want that. Mm-hmm. You know, and you want to share it with other people though. And like, yeah, that's, yeah. that's what makes it hard though, because you know, there aren't, I mean, you, you guys see it all the time. I'm sure like with these young bucks, you know, like they fuck it up for some of us, you know, by just like not reading the crowd properly, you know, shit pops off clubs get, you know, shut down. Like, are they, you know, evacuate people out of clubs, you know, like just dumb shit. Like, and that's not where we should be. Wait, wait, what do you mean about the young bucks? Uh, well, just like this, you know, the young, the younger generation of just not knowing like the format and the formula some, on some nights, you know, like, you know, okay, we're going to play hip hop tonight. So we're going to just play, you know, 4-2 Doug and Kodak Black all night. Well, this is you, like, is this you, just your gen- experience booking just, DJs? No, I'm just saying oh, just like, what I see. Okay. Just on the outside looking in. I mean, it's even like in other markets too. That's just like, you know, with the young, with these younger generation that get these parties, you know, because a lot of us started out just playing in bars, you know, or like pubs or something, you know, something's on a smaller scale. Right. But, you know, they get these parties, these parties do good. And then all of a sudden the fight breaks out or breaks out. The club gets, you know, shut down. Cops come or whatever. Tell them they can't do hip hop or whatever yeah. anymore. And then it just trickles down to the rest of us that have to live in like that stereotype still. I mean, shit, I got I got I got kicked off the decks in Portland two weeks ago. For playing fucking Bia, whole lot of money. Wow, really? dead ass. That's crazy. You don't have to bleep that out either. Yeah. Just because that guy's a chump. Sorry, <laughs> you can bleep that out if you want, but I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be that dude that's gonna well, did he look, filter. Did he you look know? at that record as like something that would like evoke it's violence. The slowest yeah. record yeah, like, of all time. Yeah, and it was literally like in the pandemic, in the size of this room that was probably 200 people. That was literally the first time that I've seen like a bunch of women up on their shit, singing along, rapping the words, you know, like feeling it, like straight up feeling it. And that's what I took from it was just like, is this like, is this like a hip hop thing or is it like, is it this or that? Like, because to be fair, we were playing like more like a future beats type set for that, for this party. Mm -hmm. And like. I had just played like by request because it was like my homie. He really wanted to hear um, Devil in the New Dress by Kanye. Oh, yeah. So I flipped it and played my boy DJ Pump. Shout out to Pump. His his flip on it because it's a little bit like extra drums and it's a little more vibey than the original. Because the original, I mean, literally, you're just going to sit there and right. rap with your boys, you know, kind of thing. You know, do a shot or two of Casamigos or some shit, yeah. <laughs> you know, but like literally went from like that record to like um it was laffy T- it was a laffy taffy after that but it was like a it was a, a future beat flip into that song and the dude just like lost his shit and they just like pulled 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 set like we were done early and it was just like okay 
Like, this is weird. But, I mean, this is also fucking Portland that we couldn't even play hip-hop there, mm. what, seven years ago? Wow. Like, there was a ban on hip-hop. It was like fucking Footloose. Really? It was weird. Are you serious? Dead ass serious. Wow. Because they just, like, insinuated it with violence and, like, they didn't want, you know, yeah. people of color, you know, grouping together in, in places. Like, it made people feel uncomfortable. Wow. It, it's weird because the new hip-hop right now, mm -hmm. like you're saying, like... uh there's this like it it's like we're all trying to play it but it's it's not, hard to yeah it's hard to play it and it's my guilty pleasure i love I, that shit i know for but, the gang and all that shit i love that shit but you can't because you know what's going to happen when we do there's though, specific you know, so. rooms that you can like you yeah. can't just hit, hit a top 40 room or a pop totally. room and play maybach which is a huge record yeah it has mm -hmm. to be in a specific room where that room that song's going to work well like there's know? been a conversation on twitter right of just like you know uh push and pee right mm -hmm. how that's mm -hmm. the biggest hip-hop song right now yeah yeah and it doesn't work right so even i don't it, know how people play that record i it's mean so pe mellow. Yeah. people yeah. are saying like that's the, the biggest record like yeah <laughs> everyone's requesting it even when i was in that city yeah the, the white people were requesting it and i'm like oh, i can't play it like there's no fucking way i'm playing yeah. it i ended up playing it towards the end of the night but <laughs> i probably won't be back at that venue by the way <laughs> oh whoops <laughs> it's kind of like funny Hello. because like i dj the way i dj the night the first hour i did everything they wanted like the first hour and 15 minutes i did everything they wanted and then there were some dj homies there and they were yeah, I was just like, yeah. and i just was like having some fun so yeah. i was like yo like i just started doing what i wanted <laughs> But it was like, you know, I, I think it was just like towards the end, they were just like, uh, yeah, like the beginning was good. Like the first half was good. <laughs> God, wow. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I'll take an L on this one, man. You know, the funny thing is you knew what they meant, but anybody else would have been like, well, what do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. Please elaborate. No, no. But, it's a, <laughs> but it's, for them to know. say that, it's like, damn. Yeah. But the beginning was good. But yeah. it's funny. It's funny. There was like some promoter there that works at some other. Uh, he has his own party mm -hmm. and he came up and he was just like, dude, you are like, he's like a young dude. He's like, you're like the best open format DJ I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. He's like the first hour was amazing, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, "Okay, the second hour." That would fuck my head up, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's hard. The rest, <laughs> the rest of the night, what was wrong? With yeah, it? <laughs> no, but I, I totally get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was, and I was playing a little more Latin. I was yeah. playing more like new hip hop and stuff. So it was just like you know, it's just one of those things where I was just like you know, I was just doing me. Yeah. And it's like, I, you know, for, I just remember a time when I was allowed to like, towards the end of the night, you're kind of allowed to do you whatever. Yeah. 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 Just be like, you've been on this journey with me, right? Totally. Mm -hmm. so trust like, me. Like, you yeah. trust me, like, yeah. you know, I'm just going to go this way a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I guess they, them staying, like, it was full. It was like, no one left. So I think that was their way of like being like, yeah, like we stayed with you, but you know, the first hour was <laughs> that was top notch. <laughs> that was uh, that was up our alley a little bit more than the than the last half hour. Yeah. Okay, guy. And I was like, all right, all right. you know, I could live with that, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it's you know, this like uh, back to this new hip hop. I feel like it's creating a divide for the clubs. Mm -hmm. So the clubs have to decide: yeah. do we want a venue that plays hip hop? That includes this new hip hop, or are we gonna do go strictly EDM? Yeah. So I've been like, I've been there's been conversations with certain venues where they're like, all right, we're gonna we're gonna probably start going more EDM because the new hip hop doesn't translate. Yeah, and I, I believe like, it. I feel it's like not as open. So now there's like, this, now there's this line where they're like, all right, so like we have to make a choice: are we open format that's gonna include this new hip hop that doesn't work, or we're we just gonna go EDM? And in that EDM, we can just throw a little hip hop remixes of shit of here and there. Yeah, but we, yeah. we can still keep it EDM and maybe keep it more quote unquote white or whatever. Yeah, white, more white friendly. Yeah, you know, more I mean? lighter. Yeah, <laughs> I'm only using that term because I fucking hate that term when fucking venue owners, GMs, or whatever use that term. Like it's getting dark in here when people of color show up. That's the worst. I That's fucking up. hate yeah. that. I've had that happen to me a few times, and I, 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 I feel so man. disrespected. Like, how do you bounce back from like, that? Like, oh, it's, oh, it's getting a little like, dark in here. I'm like, what? Dark to the lighting like guy. So to the lighting guy. Like, that's wow. such a disrespectful statement, bro. For real? To just say it's getting dark in here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dark, I mean, when that I first heard that, when I first heard about heard that, I was thinking, what? Dark? You mean what the lights? <laughs> it's a nightclub. It's supposed to be yeah. dark. <laughs> Who told you that? Who? Where'd you hear 
that I can't think. I don't know where I, I heard, heard it from. first from a, a bartender. Oh yeah, they're like, I hey, heard it first. crowd's a little dark. Mm -hmm. I heard like, it first from a manager that came up did. to me. He was like, "Yo, like, you want to try maybe doing this? It's getting a little dark in here." And I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, I heard it from a manager what? also, but I can't. I don't know which manager." I had to like <laughs> sit on that because I, I didn't know how to respond right away. Like it it it, it bothered me. That would that would be hard. Like, it, it fucked me up for about ten minutes. I had to like gather regather myself and like get back into my set, but it, it messed me up. Cause I felt I felt like they were blaming me because it was getting dark. And then at the same time, I'm like, wait, but you're blaming me, but I'm that's I'm also up. dark. So like that's that's yeah. crazy. That they said that to you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and yeah. I felt comfortable like, how do you to say that. To, how do you expect like, me to respond to that? That's yeah. like someone coming up to me and be like, it's getting a little ching chongy in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It is like what? Like how do you? What do you do? Yeah. In that moment, like you'd be like, oh yeah, 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 it's cool. No, it's not cool. You just <laughs> said some real racist <laughs> shit. It's getting a little illegal in here. <laughs> it's, getting, it's getting a little <laughs> dun, 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 in here. Oh, fun. <laughs> Can I say something? Okay. Yeah. It's getting a little yellow in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, funny. Man. <laughs> <laughs> You're so stupid. Oh man, I don't even know what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> about new records not working. Well, I don't know how we got to do shit. Back in Montana, though, no, with the horses. <laughs> so wait, your your hot sauce party. Yep. You're. You're not doing it anymore? So I stepped down at the end of February. How long has that party been going on? About five years. Five um, years. We yeah. Started in eight, 2017. Including the pandemic? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, we were clo we were shut down through the pandemic and then reopened in July of last year. All right. right. Yeah. So, I mean, we have we had a good run. I'm glad I was lucky to catch no, it. No, for sure. No, I'm glad you were too. To witness it. Um, I mean, at... During, or should I say at the moment, I'm going to probably be there once a month, but I think like bottom line, you know, I'll keep it simple so I don't bore everybody listening, but long story short, it's just, I wanted a little bit more and, mm -hmm. you know, I was considered this and I felt like I was a little bit more than that. And, you know, I think it was just kind of time to just get back on the horse and ride on. So the, no hot, pun sauce, so the hot sauce party is going to, they're going to keep doing it as far as I know. Oh, mm -hmm. you're just not going to be, as I'm just involved. not as as uh involved yeah okay you'll be there monthly i'll be there once a month okay yeah so um because right now i'm just like working with some other venues um i'm trying to put together like i'm really inspired by my homie blessed out in la he does the cuffin season party it's just mm -hmm. this, my man's like taking that shit on the road right you know and i think that's where it is like that's my goal is just to do parties with my homies you know we can go to different cities you know, everybody can get their bag and like, you know, get what they what they want or what they deserve. Because yeah. I think that there's a lot of, you know, they're they're cutting cutting funds. You know, people are getting low balled. You know, people are taking lower pay than they sh than wanted to or should because like a lot of people it's their livelihood. I just want to bring it back to like, it's our party. This is what we're doing. We call the shots. We book who we want to book. We talked to the venue. I want to take it back to like the warehouse days. Well, you you, you have a long uh, experience of starting your own parties. Yeah, you, like you had your own promotional company, right? Well, was te technically it wasn't promotional company, but I st I did um, run a record label with some homies of mine, um, with Hundred Proof and my homie DJ Hundred Proof the, and stuff. The members only. Members 206. only. Yep, two hundred six. We had a re record label for a while. And we used to throw parties, and that's kind of what inspired it because it was just like. It was fucking dope, you know? It's like, we can reach out to cats like you guys, be like, okay, what do you guys want? Bet. That's what you guys want? Bet. And, you know, be able to pay you guys exactly what you want and come in and say, yo, play whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. Just don't let people leave. You know? We don't worry about this, you know, <laughs> get too yellow in here, too dark in here, too light in here. You know, it's none of that shit. Cause like, that's, that's how the, all that started, you know, it's just like bringing different people together. So I, I wonder if we're creating like the, this ideal of uh, discrimination in our heads. Like do the young kids, do these young DJs way? see it that way? I don't think they do. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think they do. Cause I, I think maybe they're just like, oh, okay, you just want me to play more EDM. Yeah, but like we're kind of overanalyzing it, uh, maybe a little. So I'm wondering if, well, I think it might have to do with that, but possibly too. Like with these newer cat, you know, these newer cats, their ears are more like well versed. You know, I mean, uh, you know, like they listen to all kinds of shit. Right. So I think like mm -hmm. 
sometimes they know like the hot shit before we even know it like as some of the bigger you know djs mm -hmm. so i mean i think yeah there could be a little bit but also i think there's just like that idea like undercutting you know and like we'll take that gig no matter what the situation is because i even hear it from the young bucks sometimes you know they'll tell us oh you know don't play too much drake you know, play play more Doja Cat, you know, or something, you know, and like, wait, what? Yeah. Why is it why are you hating on Drake? Drizzy didn't do nothing. You know what I mean? Though, like, that sounds funny. <laughs> no, but I'm saying but it's, it's, it's I've never I've never heard that. No, yeah. but it's it's you know only one person I've ever heard say that too was uh Jamie because he plays too much Drake. <laughs> it's Drizzy. <laughs> but do you think also because I feel like for me, I have to put it into perspective that I think a lot of the new artists aren't necessarily making music for the club. Oh, and that definitely. at one point that was the goal for an artist. If you got your shit playing the radio or the club, you kind of made it, right? But they don't see it that way. Well, now, I mean, I think it's, it's just it goes back to something I read probably about a month ago with like French Montana and G Easy, like how they are talking about how that's a thing now where they're fudging their, their streaming numbers. So I don't know like what came out of that, but they're like use those two guys as like an example for like Spotify listens or whatever. But it's just like goes to, you know what D Miles is saying? It's like just because the song has like a million hits doesn't make it a hit. Mm -hmm. And I think like a lot of like, the algorithm and like what is being like depicted as like the hot records quote unquote are the songs that have like all those hits but those aren't always the best songs key example like g easy west coast it's a great fucking record but can you really play it out <laughs> i love that record you know what i'm saying though but you know what i'm saying like no, you're not yeah. getting crowds i could feel it like you feel it you know it's, yeah. it's, it's like super gremlin by by fucking kodak great record that's but a, you can't play that's a that big shit. record i mean outside of the club it's a big song totally i mean they played so in the strip club for sure yeah. there's so many hip-hop songs that are big records yeah you know, but you can't play them yeah, in the club which is crazy yeah and it feels like you know the songs that we are playing in the club is like damn we, we're still playing these yeah, yeah. like hip-hop songs <laughs> yeah like it's like yeah. the same shit and it know? still works though yeah <laughs> It works better now than it did. <laughs> and that's yeah. always a sign that there's like some kind of a gate, a, a, a gap in new music that's not hidden. And when you can go revert back to that older stuff and it's hidden. Usually when that happens, though, it, from like, you know, in the 20 years that I've been DJing, 20 plus years I've been DJing, when something like this happens, it's an organic red flag that the genres are shifting. Mm -hmm. the dominant genre right yes yeah in the clubs mm -hmm. so i could be wrong i'm not saying hip-hop is gonna go away it's <clears> not gonna go away but I'm, I'm speaking more maybe for vegas mm -hmm. i'm already we're already hearing it in these big rooms yeah, yeah. they want more of a top 40 mm -hmm. and an edm yeah energy yeah. they don't want the ratchet mm -hmm. shit yeah and you're hearing it and then you know I think there's a place for it, like Dre's, you know? 100%. Yep. But exactly. they're like, you know, we don't want, we want the top, we're either going to go top 40 or EDM. And kind of hearing that yeah. a little bit more. So I'm, I'm, I was already seeing the shift probably last year. Mm -hmm. And then now, now, it's, now it's starting to be evident. Yeah, it's evident because like every big room is different. Totally. Like you can play a little bit and it's like, no, like, you know, it's like it's all kind of like, it's not definitive yet, but you can see, you can For tell sure. like it's the ship is turning yeah. totally a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I guess we'll see if I'm if we're if my instincts are wrong. I mean, <laughs> no, I don't no, know if you guys agree. No, I, I totally agree with you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. going towards that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because I'd say like, I mean, really, the only guy that you have down here is like the homie friends, and that's like doing like true like a hip hop night, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But even, I mean, respect to him. To be honest, crazy. even the last time I heard him, he incorporated a lot more Latin. Okay. Um, he even hit like some some pop, like some Doja Cat, different things. So like even I think even for him, like okay. he's seeing it not as hard of a room that you. But would he ain't playing on EDM though. No, nah, he ain't definitely <laughs> not, not doing no EDM. Knows, no EDM. He's but he's definitely there, playing yeah. like yeah. the big Latin records. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the Tebotes. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those yeah. kind of records. He's hitting those records. You know what I mean? Um, what do you call it? Is there anything we should I touch think we're on? Good. Really glad we had you on the podcast. Man, thank you so much, man. That was fun. This was this was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank I really, you, really do appreciate it. I mean, we went a lot of like left and right and stuff. <laughs> hey, you know. I mean, that's what makes it fun, though, man. <laughs> I, 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 I really mean, enjoy yeah. your story, bro. Thank you. Likewise, yeah, I appreciate man. that. Likewise. Crazy. Thank you. I, I love it, man. I, Thanks I love, for I love being how much you. Yeah, you know? I love how much you sacrifice for hip hop. 
Yeah, that's man. A, it's it's what I know, yeah. man. Because I feel like uh, I feel like hip hop. People see hip hop as like a genre. Mm-hmm. And it really like when we were growing up, it was a cult. Something you yeah, live. Mm-hmm. It was like yeah. talk to KRS One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, he'll tell you, <laughs> give you the elements. Yeah, it was like it, yeah. it's, it was like a it's it real was shit, a lifestyle. Though. It's real shit, though. You know, mm-hmm. like it. That's the way we conduct ourselves as hip hop. Right. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not a genre for sure. Yeah, it's not like you know I don't I don't I don't live reggaeton. You know, <laughs> no. I love that shit too. But yeah, I mean I, I love you. it, but it's like you know. You know, I mean, wife, it, wifey would want it that way. It's one, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of like the, the genres that's a culture. It was based on a culture, totally. Know? And there's like a history behind it. But I, I really love what I love what uh, you sacrificed. Thanks, man. And where you appreciate where, it. Where you where you are and where you're going. Oh, we're go, we're, we're we're gonna do big shit, man. Yeah. All right, man. Yo, swerve one. Thank you, man. Thank, Thank you. If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.